Hello everybody and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today's episode is packed with new games, game updates, major upcoming events, new hardware, and a new consumer grade headset that might be the best of the best. There are of course links and timestamps in the description, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, your one stop for all VR accessories. Are you looking for a Quest to Elite strap that won't suddenly snap on you? Or a face pad that won't irritate your skin? Well, Kiwi has you covered. They carry a large array of accessories from cable management systems to replacement facial covers. There are links in the description and don't forget to use my affiliate code to help support this channel. Okay, so we'll start things off like normal with this week's release schedule. The casual city building title Space Folk has recently released for the Oculus Quest. Help your spacefaring citizens avoid an upcoming supernova, and then build them the city of their dreams. At first glance, this title looks like a mix between SimCity and Theme Park Simulator. It's an approachable, funky take on the classic city building genre, and while it recently released on the Oculus Quest, it's planned to release on Steam sometime next month. Generally, I prefer my titles with a bit more action, which is okay because Arcade is also releasing next week on the 26th. This is an early access release for both Steam and the Oculus App Lab. Arcade is a first-person shooter inspired by 1980s sci-fi settings like Tron, and it features destructible environments, an excellent soundtrack, and fast-paced action. If you're interested in checking out this game, there is a free demo on both the App Lab and Steam. I've already played the demo, and it's definitely a fun game. Our next release is an updated version of Affected The Manor. The new Complete Edition is bringing major updates, and all previously released DLC from the Quest and PC version to the PlayStation VR. This free upgrade will be available on October 28th, and there's also a new update coming to all platforms, which is the Architect's Hidden Room. You'll have to be observant while exploring the manor and find this room on your own, but the developers have promised that it holds all manner of secrets for both the present and future. Sticking with a spooky Halloween theme, Project Terminus is also releasing this week for the Oculus Quest. Act 1, The Fall of Paris, brings this horror-themed four-person co-op survival title to the Oculus Quest. It previously released for PC VR back in March, but now everyone can experience the story-driven campaign together. There's also a wave-based arcade mode if you're just looking to jump into some quick action. Rather than focusing on jump scares, this title emphasizes a horror-themed atmosphere and an overall scarcity of supplies. So this might be a perfect Halloween-themed experience that you could try out with your friends this week. Okay, so that was the release schedule. Not that it matters, because everyone's most likely still playing Resident Evil 4. If you didn't happen to pick it up, or you already completed it, don't worry, because I have a ton of game updates. Before I break them down in detail, the list of updated games includes Jupiter Grad, Population 1, Larsenauts, In Death Unchained, Swordsman VR, Demio, and Blade and Sorcery. Starting with Jupiter Grad, we now have 10 new twisted high-speed levels to explore. If you haven't tried Jupiter Grad, I do recommend it. It's like being Spider-Man in space as you platform your way through a Russian space station. It has a great sense of humor, fantastic cell shaded graphics, and intense grappling hook action that surprisingly doesn't induce motion sickness. Our next update is for Population 1, and I'm actually going to cover it live this Wednesday at 3.30pm Eastern Standard Time. Now there's currently a Halloween event going on, the nighttime map is back, there is a ghost hunt going on this week, and starting on the 27th, you can collect Halloween treats, but more importantly, a solo gameplay mode will be available. For a game named Population 1, it's surprising it took this long for there to be a solo mode. But like I said, I will be live streaming this. You can come watch me embarrass myself because I stink at this game, but I really want to cover this new gameplay mode. Not to be outdone, Larsenauts is also holding a special Halloween event where you can unlock some special skins by tracking down and destroying 10 pumpkins from each gameplay mode or in co-op training. This is running from now until November 2nd, so hurry up and jump in. Swordsman VR is also giving us the Hell Update, which is a new two-stage boss fight featuring combat and mechanics never seen before in the title. The reveal trailer is giving us absolutely nothing, but luckily this update releases today, so you can go check it out right now. Demio also has a much welcome new update, which finally includes the ability to save a game in progress. 
Until recently, this fantastic tabletop VR experience had one fatal flaw, and that was the fact that once you started a game, you had to complete it or lose your progress. And a typical game could run anything from 90 minutes to two and a half hours. Well, now you'll have the ability to save your progress mid-game, and they've also introduced some new cards to help spice things up. Speaking of spicing things up, In Death Unchained Season 4 is on the way. Every season is a new opportunity to unlock some new skins, take the leaderboard and be immortalized in this title, but developer is super bright, don't stop there, and always gives us some new surprises. Season 3 ends on November 3rd, so we're just gonna have to wait and see what's in store for us. And finally, the biggest update on today's list is the much-anticipated Dungeons update for Blade and Sorcery. Update 10 finally brings Blade and Sorcery from a sandbox arena fighter into a much more substantial title. There are now semi-procedural levels with patrolling enemies that you'll have to eliminate. Now, this is only the first part of a much larger planned update. There's updated enemy AI, improved animations, weapons, armor, and even levels. But the big stuff is still what's yet to come. Update 10 lays the groundwork for non-human enemies, and while there are now new dungeon-type maps to explore, there's no real objective, and it still remains a sandbox at heart. This will change in the future with things like a skill system and level objectives, but for right now, this is a huge step forward. Please keep in mind that your Update 9 mods will not work in Update 10. It's recommended that you delete all of your mods and even your previous save games. Okay, so one last game update before we move on to hardware. Quantar, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is currently running a free demo week. This title plans to be VR's answer to Smash Brothers, and starting on this Friday, the 29th, you'll have the ability to jump in, check out four of the playable characters, two different levels, and multiple different gameplay modes. I tried an early demo a few months back and thought it showed a lot of promise. If you're interested in checking out the demo, I will have a link down in the description. Okay, so moving into hardware news, we actually have an interesting development for the Oculus Go. I know, why are we talking about that piece of junk that's discontinued? Well, Facebook has made the OS available to the public, including root access. Now, while this doesn't mean much to the average consumer, it basically means the Oculus Go has been open to the mod scene, and now with direct access to the hardware, they can do things like overclock or underclock it, and possibly even repurpose it for something completely different. It's definitely an interesting development, and I know hardware tinkerers are going to love playing around with this, but we'll wait and see if anything big ever comes out of it. Now, an even more impressive update comes for the HP Reverb G2, which comes as a direct result from user feedback. There is now a new version of the G2 replacing the original version, which has improved tracking, a new facial insert, which allows you to get closer to the lens, increasing the FOV, and they've helped resolve AMD compatibility issues. Plus, as a little bonus, the price tag has also been dropped by $50. So if you were looking for a high fidelity PC VR headset, the HP Reverb G2 just got a little bit easier to recommend. I would definitely wait before you pick one up though, because not only is there new stuff on the way, but a major new headset has also just dropped. Let's briefly go over the upcoming events before we talk about that major new headset, the Vario Arrow, because I want to make sure you guys hold off from purchasing anything in case we get some amazing new announcements. Later today, Pimax is hosting the Pimax Frontier event, which is promising to introduce VR 3.0, a huge multi-generational leap in VR technology, or so they're claiming, but I'm pretty sure what this is going to include is a new headset, built-in eye tracking, a roadmap for existing products, and new stuff going forward and of course, something about the metaverse. I'm definitely intrigued yet skeptical of this event, but I will have updates for you guys as soon as possible. Speaking of updates, Facebook Connect is also coming this week, which I will be covering live with my buddy Alex VR. I am expecting some cool game announcements and the possibility of some new hardware. If Facebook does indeed drop a new headset, I will order it on the spot and make one available for a giveaway, so don't forget to join me for the live stream. And it looks like there is going to be a new headset because we just got some more leaks. The data mining of Oculus updates and firmware continues, and now we have some really impressive videos to go over. They show off a new headset, just like the one we saw Boz wearing. We also get to see the ringless rumored controllers with a charging dock, and it looks like there's going to be a new emphasis on productivity, and of course, the metaverse. But there is a new major headset that I can talk about right now, and that is the Vario Aero. If you're not familiar with Vario, they make the absolutely most insane enterprise-level headsets. 
We're talking about micro LCD screens that have the same fidelity as the human eye. They also feature some pretty amazing pass-through AR tech. Well, now they've scaled back on some of that technology a little bit and made a consumer-grade version. I'm saying consumer-grade with air quotes because this is still a high-level prosumer edition. The Aero comes in at $2,000, and that price tag is way ahead of anything else. At first thought, you might compare it to a Valve Index at $1,000, but that's the price of the entire kit. The Valve Index headset itself is only $500, and the Aero doesn't include the needed base stations or the integrated audio of the Valve Index. But what it does deliver is an absolutely unbeatable high resolution mini LED LCD display. At 2880 by 2720 per eye resolution, nothing comes remotely close to this display. It also uses built-in eye tracking for foveated rendering and to automatically adjust for your IPD. This headset is an absolute dream for sim fans, but I have a very selfish viewpoint when I analyze new VR hardware. My current daily driver is a Valve Index, and I always stack new products up against it. I'm looking for a direct improvement in every category, and unfortunately, the Vario Air doesn't deliver, and I just can't justify a $2,000 price tag. Sure, the resolution is a significant upgrade, but moving back to using headphones, reducing the FOV and hertz of the screen are just compromises I'm not willing to make. That being said, though, I would still love to test one of these because I've heard the clarity is absolutely mind-blowing. But for now, I'm still waiting on a headset that doesn't compromise at all compared to my Valve Index. I just need some increased resolution, 120 hertz, a field of view of 130 degrees or more, that amazing form factor, and built-in audio solution. So somebody out there, Pimax, Facebook, Valve, it's about time. It's been two years now with the Valve Index. I'm ready for something new. Okay, everybody, that was today's new VR news. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. And as always, I will see you guys on next time.